Israeli security forces made headway early Sunday toward regaining control of the towns and areas held by Hamas terrorists who infiltrated 24 hours earlier as the country reeled from one of the darkest days in its history, which saw an unprecedented onslaught on the southern communities with over 300 killed, over 1,800 wounded, and apparently dozens kidnapped and taken into the Gaza Strip. On Sunday morning, over 24 hours after the coordinated assault began, Israeli security forces were still struggling to clear terrorist cells entrenched within devastated communities. Many civilians were still holed up in their homes, hiding in fear of roving terrorists searching for victims as troops dealt with some hostage takers and stormed homes and facilities, shooting the Palestinian gunmen within. All known hostage situations, which saw Israeli civilians held captive by Hamas gunmen in their towns, were resolved overnight, with army and police forces killing terrorists and rescuing their captives after hours-long standoffs in Steret, Ofakim and Kibbutz Bieri, where full control was declared. However, gunfights were continuing in some communities, such as Kfar Aza, Riaim and likely Erez and Zikim as well. The Hamas terror group in the Gaza Strip said Saturday that it had launched over 5,000 rockets at Israelis in a surprise attack that it called Operation Al-Aqsa Deluge. The terror group also breached the barrier surrounding Gaza, with dozens of gunmen infiltrating Israeli towns and communities in an unprecedented attack that killed over 200 and wounded over 1,100 by 9 p.m., with numbers expected to rise. Today the people are regaining their revolution, Hamas military commander Muhammad Deef said in a recorded message, as he called on Palestinians from East Jerusalem to Northern Israel to join the fight and expel the occupiers and demolish the walls. We must set the earth on fire under the feet of the occupiers, he said, claiming that Hamas had fired over 5,000 rockets into Israel. Israel put the number at more than 2,200 rockets. He added that it was also in response to Israel killing and wounding hundreds of Palestinians this year, and said that Jerusalem had rejected offers for prisoner exchange deals. He also called on the Islamic resistance in Lebanon, Iraq, Syria and Lebanon, countries with terror movements that are militarily supported by Iran, to merge their resistance with that of the Palestinians today and start marching towards Palestine now. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to bring the full force of the Israeli military against the Gaza Strip's Hamas terror group Saturday night, warning Israelis of tough days ahead as the nation retaliates for a shocking surprise attack that has left hundreds dead and turned sleepy border towns into a war zone. The Israel Defense Forces will act immediately to destroy Hamas's capabilities, Netanyahu said in a televised address, as terrorists were still holed up with hostages in at least three locations inside Israel. We will cripple them mercilessly and avenge this black day they have brought upon Israel and its citizens. Residents of Gaza, get out now. We will be everywhere and with all our might, he added, as thousands of reserves troops made their way to military bases for a widely expected counteroffensive. The premier spoke some 16 hours after hundreds of Hamas terrorists infiltrated into Israel from Gaza, invading towns and kibbutzim near the Strip, killing at least 250 people, many of them civilians, wounding over 1,500 and apparently taking dozens hostage. Thousands of rockets from Gaza pounded the south and areas as far as Tel Aviv and Jerusalem in the unprecedented attack, which caught Israel completely off guard as it celebrated the Jewish holiday of Simchat Torah. This is an enemy that murders children and mothers in their homes, in their beds. An enemy that kidnaps the elderly, kids, youths. Murderers who massacre and slaughter our citizens, our kids, who just wanted to have fun on the holiday, Netanyahu said. What happened today has never before seen in Israel, and I will make sure it does not happen again. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivers a televised address on October 7, 2023. Screen captured slash GPO. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to bring the full force of the Israeli military against the Gaza Strip's Hamas terror group Saturday night, warning Israelis of tough days ahead as the nation retaliates for a shocking surprise attack that has left hundreds dead and turned sleepy border towns into a war zone. The Israel Defense Forces will act immediately to destroy Hamas's capabilities, Netanyahu said in a televised address, as terrorists were still holed up with hostages in at least three locations inside Israel. We will cripple them mercilessly and avenge this black day they have brought upon Israel and its citizens. Residents of Gaza, get out now. We will be everywhere and with all our might, he added, as thousands of reserves troops made their way to military bases for a widely expected counteroffensive. 
the premier spoke some 16 hours after hundreds of Hamas terrorists infiltrated into Israel from Gaza, invading towns and kibbutzim near the Strip, killing at least 250 people, many of them civilians, wounding over 1,500 and apparently taking dozens hostage. Thousands of rockets from Gaza pounded the south and areas as far as Tel Aviv and Jerusalem in the unprecedented attack, which caught Israel completely off guard as it celebrated the Jewish holiday of Simchat Torah. This is an enemy that murders children and mothers in their homes, in their beds. An enemy that kidnaps the elderly, kids, youths. Murderers who massacre and slaughter our citizens, our kids, who just wanted to have fun on the holiday, Netanyahu said. What happened today has never before seen in Israel, and I will make sure it does not happen again. Get the Times of Israel's Daily Edition. By email and never miss our top stories. Newsletter email address. Get it. By signing up, you agree to the terms. Slamming his fists down and injecting his words with fury, Netanyahu vowed that Israel would win this war, but warned of a heavy cost, hinting at a likely ground incursion. This war will take time. It will be hard. We have tough days ahead of us, he said. People tried to extinguish burning cars following a rocket attack from the Gaza Strip in Ashkelon, southern Israel, on October 7, 2023, Ahmad Garabli slash AFP. Accusing Hamas of launching a cruel and evil war, the premier said that U.S. President Joe Biden and other world leaders he had spoken with had promised Israel would have freedom of action to continue this battle. Advertisement he did not mention discussions he'd held with opposition leaders to form an emergency unity government, but noted his entire cabinet, made up primarily of hardliners who have long pushed for wider action against Gaza, stood behind the decision to hit back hard. Any place Hamas deploys, in this evil city, all the places Hamas is hiding, operating, we will turn it into a ruin, he said. Hours later, after huddling with ministers and security chiefs, Netanyahu said in a separate message that Israel was embarking on a long and difficult war that was forced upon us by a murderous attack by Hamas. The first phase of the war, he wrote on X, involves destroying most of the enemy forces that infiltrated into Israel. Israel has also begun an offensive into Gaza and it will continue without hesitation and without respite until the goals are achieved, the premier said. We will restore security to the citizens of Israel, and we will win, he writes. Netanyahu spoke as battles were still taking place inside Israel, with security forces struggling to locate an unknown number of terrorists who had overrun cities, agricultural communities, and army bases early in the morning. In Steret, a bulldozer ran to police station where at least one terrorist was thought to be hiding, and pops of gunfire continued to echo through the city, with residents hiding inside and bodies on the streets. Gun battles or hostage standoffs were also reportedly taking place in Kibbutz Bieri, Kibbutz Kfar Aza and Ofakim. Complicating the plans to set Gaza back 50 years, as threatened by Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, were dozens of people thought to have been kidnapped and taken into Gaza by Hamas terrorists, both alive and dead. Israel will avenge anyone who is harmed, Gallant warned the terror group, in so much as a hair on their head. Israel has responded very forcefully in the past to the capture of soldiers and civilians. Earlier, the military's liaison to the Palestinians threatened Hamas with a harsh response. Hamas opened the gates of hell on the Gaza Strip. Hamas made the decision and Hamas will bear the responsibility and pay the price, said Major General Ghassan Alien, the coordinator of government activities in the territories. The military carried out a number of strikes against Hamas sites in Gaza, taking down a high-rise building in the process. Delivering a televised statement an hour before Netanyahu's remarks, Biden promised Israel rock-solid support. Israel has the right to defend itself and its people, full stop. There's never justification for terrorist attacks and my administration's support for Israel's security is rock-solid and unwavering. Hebrew media reports put the number of dead from the day's attacks at 250 or more, with at least 1,590 wounded, many seriously, according to the health ministry. At least 232 people in the Gaza Strip have been killed and at least 1,700 wounded, the Palestinian health ministry said, many of them apparently in Israeli strikes.